The following thoughts and opinions we're going to discuss regarding this album are strictly of our own personal interests. We are not professional music reviewers. We encourage respectful discussion and friendly banter in each episode, but we do not condone and will not tolerate bullying or belligerence. You are welcome to take what we say regarding the albums we rate with a grain of salt. Well, hey there, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Rate the Record podcast, episode 84. Yeah, this episode would be 30, what, 38, nine years old? He was born in 1984. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Or maybe it would have been so much more fitting if we were doing Van Halen's 1984 today or something along the lines of that. We're not witty enough. I'm not witty enough. This was my pick today. <laughs> Oops. No, so your very Orwellian host for the day are Chris and Savannah and doesn't know what that means. George Orwell wrote 1984. Mm. I knew that, but I don't know what the descriptor means, but this music podcast. Just if you describe anything as Orwellian, that's it usually it's a scenario from 1984 applied to real life. Interesting. There you go. I had to explain it all. What a <laughs> wonderful way to start the podcast explaining George Orwell. Anyways, welcome to the podcast. We're uh, glad that you made it here. Welcome. I hope you enjoy your stay. Have fun listening to music with us. As always, we've been doing it for 83 episodes now, so this is the 84th that we're going to be doing. Uh, And if you like what you see and or hear today, depending on how you're listening, there's a bunch of ways you can show us. One way, a combo of ways, or all the ways. Like, subscribe, rate, share, comment, follow. Those things are free to do. They're very quick. They help build us into the algorithm more and more, more eyes and ears on the prize. We want more people like you to help build this musical community brick by brick by uh, obscure Canadian band by not obscure Canadian band because not this one. Regardless, help us do it. Yes, please. Uh, we are poor in uh, friends, money, and subscribers. And if you don't want to hear us complain about that, subscribe and like and comment and share. Thank you. Exactly. So, like, the more you help, the less likely we are to bitch. Asterisk, not promised. Yes, not <laughs> promised at all. <laughs> hey, you know what else makes this feel real good, though? If you go to ratetherecord.ca, our actual home base website, and you can find everything you need over there. All of the streaming links we have for audio and video, all of our social media pages, uh, the RTR club, which is kofi.com slash rate the record, five bucks a month, you can join that. You can find that link over there, and if you want access to, uh, early access to podcasts, bonus content, uh, shout out, we review your band's music, all that kind of fun stuff, that's the RTR club. You can request albums, merch, and I think I've covered all, covered all the bases there. So art, rate the record.ca. Make sure you're checking that out and uh, bookmarking it because you could just follow us everywhere except in real life. Yes, please don't do Well, yeah, don't do that. Please don't do that. I was like, that. why would you even consider? You were considering <laughs> that for like a second there. I was like, well, I get lonely you rather, sometimes. Do you want people like standing on your sidewalk waiting for you to come outside? You leave for work and there's like 20 people there just like silently staring at you because they yeah, know but who then, you are. Then I get to wear a fur coat and big sunglasses and I go, no, no, not today. And then all my neighbors will be like, oh, is she a celebrity? And then that one neighbor will be like, no, no, she's not. I let her, I borrowed, she borrowed that jacket from me. You really there had to think you your way through that one. I definitely did. I am not good at improv. I also hope it'll be 35 degrees outside the day that you decided to wear a fur coat. So you're like, you're dying on your way to work and people are still just like, wow, she's really committed to the bit. <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> Anyways, we eventually do talk about music, but you know that if you've been here before, we just got to get through all this stupid stuff in the beginning. So hello, welcome back to the podcast. If you've been here before, we're glad to have you back again. Just hanging out, listening to music as always. But if you're new here, welcome to the show. We hope you enjoy your stay. Yes, this is how we start the show. Sorry if it's a long ass tangent, but at the same time, we got to get things flowing a little bit. So you'll learn that as you uh, continue to join us for future episodes. Uh, And if you're going to do that, then chances are you need to know what we do here on the podcast. So each week, Savannah and I will choose an album beat completely at random, whatever the hell we want, just whatever we're in the mood for, whether we like it or not, or we just don't even know it. Uh, Requested albums, obviously we do those, and album anniversaries, we've done plenty of those too, so regardless, we will take an album, we'll discuss it at length from front to back, we rank the songs, and then we rate the the record! record. There, even I clapped with you that time. Yay, because I did well for once. When, and also, too, I think it's the first time you clapped where it hasn't cut out on Zoom. So I was like, I might as well join in. <laughs> after, after 83 episodes, you'd think I'd get my shit together. And I may have. So, yay. 
Well, I, I don't have hope for future episodes. Maybe it's just one of those good ones. See, you, yeah. you have to carry on the good vibe today because uh, you probably can't even hear it in my voice, but I am sick. I'm getting over a cold that's like killing my throat. My throat is pretty sore right now. So yay for a lot of talking today. <laughs> yay. And I'm going to ask you a lot of questions and demand lengthy answers. Uh, uh, well, lengthy as in I'll give two word answers. The first word, long pause, second word. <laughs> That's, Very that's, artistic. That's, that's how I loophole that whole situation. <laughs> Fair enough. Anyways, I think it's time to start talking about music here. So today for episode 84, Savannah has chosen yeah. the Tragically Hip and their 1992 album fully completely. You are correct. I keep thinking 1993. That's why I was hesitant on right? that one. I keep telling yes. myself 93, but it's like, no, it's 92, 92. And Road yep. Apples came out in like, what, 91, I think it was. 91. There yep. you go. I'm starting to get my uh, <laughs> shit together here. I'm sick, but I'm kind of working. Uh, anyways, I'm going to take a break from talking because my poor sick throat needs it. And Savannah's going to tell you a little bit about today's artist and album in case you're not Canadian. Okay. Now, I am going to preface this with with this introduction of the Tragically Hip. I do not mention Gord Downey and his bout of glioblastoma. He did pass away in 2017. This album came out far, far before that. But I did want to make note just in case somebody says, oh, you missed this. It isn't uh, relevant to this album, but it is relevant in the uh, grand scheme of things. And uh, my heart is with him and his family. For and sure. was wasn't he like put on like the the honor of Canada or whatever it's called? Uh, I can't well, I wouldn't doubt the it. the order of Canada. I think that's it. And then like he got hit. He has like a special designation in like certain native groups. Yeah, yeah, because he was definitely uh, pushing towards. Uh, I I need to do some research, and I really don't want to misspeak. But he does have a uh, a foundation to uh, to support the uh, indigenous peoples of Canada. So. I think it's Secret Path because that was the name of the solo album he did, which was like literally a story of like one per- person I believe, and it was like it was yeah, huge I for think the his native- last name was Wojak. Wo- so. Yeah, it, it was a uh, huge for the native community. That's all yep. I, I'm aware of right now. Yep. Uh, so we're going to start the introduction proper now. The Tragically Hip were a band originally from Kingston, Ontario, Canada, formed in 1984. There you go, 1984. The members met at separate times throughout their time in university. They played the greater Toronto area for a while until being seen at the Horseshoe Tavern by Vice by the vice president of MCA Records. They signed a lengthy deal with MCA and released their debut EP in 1987. Their first full-length album scored them heavy rotation on Canadian radio with at least three highly popular singles. The second album garnered the band the same play as their previous with at least three heavily featured singles. For their third offering, the trend of beloved singles wouldn't end. I I will be referring to them as The Hip because I'm lazy. And also, that's a very Canadian thing to do. That's literally all it is. The Hip released fully completely in 1992, and that album holds six singles, Locked in the Trunk of a Car, 50 Mission Cap, Courage, At the 100th Meridian, Looking for a Place to Happen, and the title track, Fully Completely. The album was recorded in London, England by Chris, and his last name is hard to pronounce, so I'm going to try my hardest, Sangerids, but it, it looks Greek, so <laughs> sorry, sorry for that. Uh, The approach to this album compared to the first two was not to mimic the band in a live setting, but to create some sounds and experiences that the band hadn't had up to here, which is the title of their debut album. (laughs) Fully Completely was accepted with open arms in Canada, although the sales expectations for the United States fell flat. MCA literally stopped production of the album in the States after only two weeks. 14 days is what they gave this album to succeed in the United States. It didn't. And they were like, okay, we're done. That's it. So that sucks. But despite this, in 2007, the album was certified diamond in Canada, which I believe is over a million uh, sold. Mm -hmm. It won album of the year at the 1993 Junos, which is like a Canadian Grammys. And our besties at all music gave this album a 4.5 out of 5. And I believe and, they're American uh, review thing, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. So, hey, look at that. They like it. 
it was the only uh, like star review on Wikipedia um, because this album was released in 1992 and there's been a reissue and all that stuff. I felt that only reading the uh, the review on Wikipedia was a little bit more accurate than me, you know, chasing my own tail through the Internet. So that's all we get. And that's all there is. I'm just going to look up really quick because I'm, I'm very curious because I, I would be so shocked that they didn't have a score on like Metacritic because like, I mean, I, I, I get that they were only really big in Canada, but I mean, still, uh, no, they only Man Machine Poem. That's it. I thought Metacritic was solely uh, movies. I didn't know that there was. Oh, uh, no, they do music too. Stuff. I, I've, uh, I've, I've included them in some of uh, the descriptions yeah. before. Interesting. Well, then, they're not on Metacritic, oh, except for one album, so that's it. Uh, so, yeah, if you haven't heard the Tragic Leap before, yes, you have. Chances are you've heard at least <laughs> one of these singles. Oh, yes. As a matter of fact, we're going to get started with the very first song, and I'm sure this is one of the ones that broke borders at some point. You could say that about a number of tracks, though. So song number one, Courage, parentheses, for Hugh McLennan. Um, now you start, I'm going to look up Hugh McLennan. I did before, but I don't recall who he is. Well, and also it's your, oh, he's a writer. Always me, you always give me the start anyway. Yeah, of course I do. A Canadian writer. Um, so this is going to be a, like a, a blanket statement for pretty much the entire album. Uh, and it has to do with the production because it's got a very friendly and warm tone to it, oh, yes. which is nice. There, there's just something so warm about production all over this album, even in like the I don't want to say darker sounding songs, but just not as happy sounding songs. I don't really know how to properly describe it, but regardless, it has like that good tone all through. It's pretty consistent. And even with like a number of layers in each song too, some, some songs have far more layers than others. Yeah. Uh, it, it's still all pretty easy to take in and it's like full, but comfortable. So this album has like some solid production all the way across. Um, speaking of comfortable, um, just you know, being Canadian, living in Canada the, my whole entire life. Um, just listening to these songs make me feel warm because it's nostalgic for a time that I lived through. It's not finally, it's not nostalgic for something I don't know. But just listening to this, I'm like, oh, like brings me back to a myriad of times. But musically, I like that it starts off with energy. It doesn't have to ramp up. And I like the chugging bass and that I can hear it through the verse and into the chorus. It doesn't really get lost anywhere. It's, it kind of, and I mentioned this uh, in a song coming up that it feels like the bass and the drums are just walking hand in hand down the street together. And I, I like that. I think there's only one song I pointed out on this album uh, where the bass really stood out to me. This isn't it. Not that it like doesn't have its yeah. own standout moments, but I don't know. I guess maybe I just didn't notice it while I was listening to the album a few times, but there's just one song that it always came back to. And I was like, Oh, okay. This is definitely the one then like this one like yeah. I noticed. So it's interesting, but no, the bass is like never buried in the mix at the very least. Yeah. It, I mean, it's not meant to stand out in a record like this, but at the same time you can still hear it, notice it and it's playing its part. So that's good. Um, I, I really like the way the song starts with like the instrumental harmonies. Uh, it, it's a it's like a really nice way to not only start the song but the entire album. So it kind of gives you like a good amount of flavor to start out with, rather than just like one very straightforward guitar line. It could be like two or three notes on one guitar. Mm. There's actually harmonies across what sounds like a couple different guitars. So I don't know. I like it. <laughs> I I also like it. Um, I like the drums following the guitar riff in the chorus because it really accentuates and like lends itself to upper body dancing, which I did a lot of through this entire album. Um, I like the bridge and how quiet it is. It's longer than you'd think it would be, but the payoff was worth it because it's an easy and natural lead back into the chorus because it's kind of, it's, uh, it's all of the instruments, but they're not played to their fullest capacity they're sort of muted and they're demure but then it gets louder and louder and then it brings it right back into the chorus again and i really like the way that they did that it was a good choice yeah it, it's all right like i don't remember the song being four and a half minutes long to be 100 percent honest it doesn't feel like it eh? no and i i guess the length's not too bad and i think i would have preferred the song of a ring out uh rather than just like the fade out that i had like yeah a, i don't know it's something i would like some finality in the first song so because it a lot of albums have like that first song that um that kind of just starts the album gets you in the mood for it and then the second song's kind of like the real starter yeah like uh, the appetizer 
and this one kind of feels like that like courage kind of feels like it in that way uh so that's why i think the ring out would have been better so it's just like here's the like the, the intro song done so let's get into this album now so that's really cool yeah. uh and just one more blanket statement too for the entire like tragically hip catalog um they're insanely good at writing like catchy and memorable tracks yes. like you're Sing gonna hear singles <laughs> yeah i mean especially like uh the acoustic ballad of this album too we'll get to that a little later um not sure how they nailed it down so good to be able to write like this uh but the song and many others on this album are just solid proof of that so i mean these they're obviously fantastic songwriters for a reason they're in the songwriters hall of fame so there you go uh i like the guitar solo it felt like another voice and it wasn't flashy at all but like you said it didn't feel long at all it for me, had my attention the entire time. Um, I think it is a good start to the album, and I give it four Coors Lights out of five. Yes, we are doing this again. But isn't Coors an American beer? I don't know. I just know that the Tragically Hip is played in Cougar bars, and I imagine them drinking Coors Light. You, you know, let's let's switch that to let's just say that to Molson Canadian. Oh, let's you know what? We're gonna go. Okay. Four Molson Canadians out of five. Perfect. I, I like that. I can hear you typing over. <laughs> the, I can hear the bassy thump because it's going through the microphone. So when I put that, I'm going to leave that in the episode and people are going to know that you really indeed changed your note on the fly. <laughs> of course I did. Of course I did. I want to look back and go, good job, Spana. Because you'll always revisit these episodes. Of course, I you will always never. do. Always do. <laughs> Alrighty then. Uh, speaking of going to a cougar bar, song number two, looking for a place to happen. <laughs> I like that transition. Nice. Well, because uh, this this is a song I imagine hearing a cougar bar. I don't have that written down, but I'll say this: like you can go to any like just kind of dive bar. Not that the hip is only going to be played in dive bars. Although, granted, like anyone drunk at two a.m. is putting wheat kings on the fucking jukebox <laughs> and crying. Yeah, it's like a bunch of dudes who don't know each other at the bar just putting their arms around each other. Wheat kings <laughs> but that's a little later on the record oh, yeah. looking for yeah. a place to happen song number two now i don't know if it's because i grew up listening to this in canada but my god to me this sounds very canadian um there i i like the music on its own and the lyrics are common like speak sing but the melody feels like it should be on a different music bed and there's something about this that sounds disconnected. I It was hard. I know this song. I like this song. But I have a hard time putting this alongside the other singles because it doesn't feel as cohesive to me. I don't know if there was just like a different songwriting or a different idea happening here. But I think until it gets to the chorus, I'm kind of sitting there going, I, eh, I don't really like it. Chorus is good. But everything around it, I'm like, eh, it's okay. I, I honestly have similar feelings on that too. Cause I, again, oh, thank I, God. I, I thought it was just me. I, I like this song too, but there's just listening to it in the entirety of the album. Uh, it, it feels different because like, and I'll just jump ahead in my notes a little bit too. Uh, like where the chorus, for example, feels very unassuming. Mm -hmm. Uh, like I honestly thought the course was the pre course for a little while. Uh, cause you're always waiting for that one big pickup. Like you're yeah. waiting just for like, the course to come in you know um but you never really get it so it's kind of like a letdown in a way but it's it's weird because it still sounds good you're like that john travolta meme where he's placed in front of things and he's just looking around and you're looking around for the chorus where is it? <laughs> waiting for the bang like <laughs> um i really i really dig like the uh the instrumentals at the very least like uh the riding root note on the guitar and bass while the others are just kind of like doing other things on top of that mm -hmm. it's fun layering it keeps the track interesting so i i really dig that and realistically i dig this song but like i feel like for the first couple of minutes because like nothing really changes up beyond that to make it feel like yeah. it needed to be a four minute and 18 second runtime yeah, it did feel longer than the other one. They're relatively the same time. Uh, yeah, same time almost. Which is weird because if if we were just listening to this on the radio, like in a mix of other things, like Van Halen was before this and 5440 is after this. And like this song was on nice. in the middle of something like that was, I just randomly named bands. And chances are <laughs> no one, unless you're Canadian, you don't know who 5440 is. <laughs> I have a story about them, kind of, but I'll save it. Yeah. Um, 
like this would the song would sound fine. I wouldn't think twice about the length. I wouldn't think about how it sounds or anything. It would sound good. But again, just like listening to this as a whole album, like yeah, this this there's something missing in this track, and I think it's like that big chorus. I think that's kind yeah. of what it needed. I I agree. Um, I I wrote that I do enjoy the chorus, but it might be for the change in riff during. It's just I kind of like that there was a change in the whole song. Um, now. I'm not a fan of the guitar solo here. It does kind of feel like someone who's just learning how to play. Please don't hurt me for my opinions. There are better guitar solos on this album. Didn't Wasn't really a fan of this one. Um, Grand Scheme didn't mind it, but you have to review it. You got to find something to talk about. And I give it six guitar strings out of 10. Well, I mean, that's a full set of strings then. That's all you need. Six strings for a guitar. So if anything, that's a perfect score. I'm not score. fielding questions. And that's not a question. I'm just saying that's a perfect score. You say I six am... out of ten, but six strings is all you no, need. No, it is six out of ten strings. Well, then what do you do with the other four? I told you I'm not fielding questions. God damn it, you're right. <laughs> um, I, I'm going to go back for a second because you just mentioned like, oh, please don't attack me for my opinion. Uh, I'm going to read my, like, because sometimes we do like a quick review or sometimes I'll kind of give a quick review on the album. This doesn't mm-hmm. spoil anything that actually at all, but my quick review just simply says, I don't think it matters what we say about the album. Canada will cast us out for not s <laughs> it. Yeah, probably. Uh, Americans will be like, okay, I get it. But Canadians will be like, you don't belong here anymore, eh? <laughs> um, I'm going to be quite honest with you. And through my father's side, I can get my uh, United Kingdom passport. So if I am ousted from Canada, I do have somewhere else to go. So I am glad that I'm covered in that way. Uh, I, I have a, I'm not going to say where, but I have a relative who lives in the United States as much as I don't want to live there. I'd go live with her. Florida. I bet it's Florida. Why would Nobody, you think Florida? Because no one wants to go to Florida. Nobody does. And you think my aunt's going to live there? <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. Depends how old she is and how long she's been retired. <laughs> Actually, I think she still works. Oh, definitely not Florida then. <laughs> All righty then. We'll move on to song number three. Oh, look at that. Another single. At the 100th Meridian. And it's it's funny because, like, uh, considered me goddamn ignorant, I didn't know what the hell the 100th Meridian even I was. I had to Google it. <laughs> it's the fucking dividing line. Really know. He 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 wasn't lying when he said it's where the Great Plains began. It's like yeah, yeah I guess you're right. Like right through America and uh, Canada, just like it's right in that like middle of nowhere, butt fuck grassland. Like so, yeah, it's just like the middle dividing line. So there you go. So I I did put this note in a a different song, and I'll probably touch upon it again. But uh, I swear to God, I want to write songs by just reading Wikipedia pages. I imagine it's just like, like, obviously it didn't exist at the time. He probably opened a Funkin' Wagnalls encyclopedia and was like, we're going to write a song about this. And uh, I just imagine opening up a page, just kind of picking a number, clicking a bunch of links and going, okay, we're going to write a song about that. Hmm, it feels like Gord did that for a song called 50 Mission Cap. Oh, yeah, exactly, I guess we'll get to that. Later. That is exactly the, the song I have that note in. He even, he, even in the lyrics, he's like, I stole this from a hockey card. <laughs> Something like that, but singing about like, oh, it's where the Great Plains begin. It feels like he read it out of an encyclopedia. But I mean, it made for a decent song, so why not? Oh, and I, I guess this is another one of those things I, I got to throw it out there. We don't mention this every episode, but we don't really do lyrical analysis. Every once in a while we do, but we don't really do it. And I know with the Tragic Lamp, I know with Gord Downey that the oh, lyrics are very important because he's like just he's known as a very good songwriter like a lyricist yeah um so if you're wondering why we're not talking about the lyrics that's it uh, trust me i've read through quite a few on this album and here's the confusing part i'll say not even just about this song but a lot of what he does in general uh he tends to interweave a lot of themes into one song so mm-hmm. there's not one concise meaning so it, like when i was reading the lyrics to, like locked in the trunk of a car yeah. Uh, apparently that's got like a couple of different things it could be because oh. like he had like a couple different things that could be meant from it and he also sometimes doesn't necessarily even uh he doesn't really tell people what song certain songs mean there's one song i can't remember what it was but he said like the song uh is about something in quebec but he doesn't specify what it is it's just like you, you know how much wow. shit in history has happened in quebec and how much they hate the rest of canada yeah 
Just because my favorite hockey team is there doesn't mean that they like me. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, I guess it's when he's singing it, he just sees the images of what he was talking about, but wants to keep it vague enough that the audience thinks of something else. <clears throat> All right. Well, to actually start talking about the song now, though, um, th this track is still technically uh, far lighter so far than the other two tracks, I would say, although it's mm -hmm. not really like light, light, I guess. Uh, there's something always about it that kind of reminds me of Evenflow. Oh, yeah. Like, again, because I mean, Evenflow is obviously a little heavier, um, but just there's something about just the way it builds into the verse in the beginning that's just. I don't know, immediately made me think of Evenflow. So I thought that was a, a neat little callback to uh, our very first episode. It might be the uh, the aggro, menacing, speak, sing vocals. <laughs> that too, but I think it, a lot of it came in the guitar and just the composition okay. of that. Like, the, Obviously, it's not the exact same riff, but there's just something there. Like, There's a similarity there that yeah. just reminded me of it and everything like that. And awesome. this did come out, what, like uh, a year, a year after later. 10 did. Yeah. So maybe there's like, damn, this Pearl Jam band like really on to something. Anyways, here's our version of Evenflow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to get killed just for saying that they ripped off Pearl Jam. <laughs> oh my God, you're going to get killed in general. What did I just say about the review? It doesn't matter what we say. We don't, if we don't S-tier this album, we are no longer Canadian. <laughs> that That is true. But I do have a question about this one. Is this song classified as rap? Uh, because I mean, the way he sings near the end, you can tell there's more, um, more emotion, I guess, but just more everything. And it starts to feel like a rap. Well, especially in that, like that last verse when he's just kind of like flowing and everything yeah, like that. I like it. I mean, m maybe so, because like there was a lot of rock bands in the early nineties who were like, who were lightly influenced by rap. So, I mean, mm -hmm. even if it, if, if it's not your primary thing at all, like you could still make an appearance. So who, I mean, who knows? Maybe Gord really dug fucking Public Enemy. I don't know. Maybe don't like know. like Run DMC for all I know. The Beastie Boys. I I, I don't know what he listened to. Yeah. It, it would be nice to, uh, I guess, to find out sort of where the influences and stuff came from. Like, uh, to be honest, I'm not a die hard fan where I know this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so, I mean, if there is access to that information, I am yet to uh, seek it out. But uh, listening to this, I'm like, this... This would sound like a decent rap. Just rework it a little bit, remix it. At the hundredth meridian, something something remix. <laughs> <laughs> Dubstep mix. <laughs> Gross. Oh my god! Imagine. But Canadian oh rap. God. Oh god! If you had to like abbreviate that, it would literally just be crap, wouldn't it? Canadian rap, crap. So this song has a good vibe. Snow but... comes from Canada. He's not that great. Sorry, not sorry. Anyways. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, has a good vibe, but there's not much here that wasn't there already. Like, if you know what I mean, sort of this kind of my blanket statement for the album. Um, they have a formula. Um, I'm not saying that any of it is bad. It's just sort of noticeable. Um, I noticed that on this one, we're only three songs in, but I give this 71 meridians out of 100. Damn, it's still a lot of meridians. It, it is. What is a meridian? <laughs> is it a? I, I guess it's. I guess it's technically a line, then, isn't it? Because the hundredth meridian would be like the line. Where are the other one hundred meridians? I, I I have no idea. I know the band Merillion, and that is irrelevant to the, to this review. Before I was celiac, I actually tried the beer at the hundredth meridian. They release a beer called. Oh that. my god! So as I was looking up. Uh, the Tragically Hip. I didn't know that the band sued Mill Street Brewery for calling a beer the 100th Meridian. That's because, what I had. Because that, um, it kind of puts that in the public's mind that they are affiliated with the beer when they are not. I didn't know they were not. I thought they were. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the um, Mill Street Brewery, that, that's kind of negligent on their part because, I mean, yeah. like, that obviously means a lot to Canadians uh, who like rock music. So, I mean, like, of course you're going to associate the band. So you're kind of yeah. using that to sell your beer. But that is like a, that's a bit beer, of a cheap shot. Great Plains. I can see what they were going for, but I also can tell that they were not, like, they weren't trying not to do it. And I think there's a, um, a a WHL team, the Western Hockey League. I think there's a 
team team called the uh, the Wheat Kings. So I wonder if they got sued. Ooh. I hope not. No, no, they've been around for a while. They're fine. Oh, that's good. If anything, they're they're probably celebrated <laughs> out there. I don't know. Uh, still with the song though. Um, say, uh, yeah, I don't think this necessarily sounds bad or the vo- uh, like or anything like that. But I've never been too keen on the vocals. Is what I yeah. meant to say. Um, I think the only thing I've really liked about the vocals in the song, like again, not that they're bad, but I like the back and forth in the chorus as they're mm-hmm. singing. I, I believe that's a uh, Gord and then Gord Sinclair in the yeah. background. Although I had to look up what he was saying. Well, apparently, a lot of people don't know what Gord Sinclair is saying. Yeah, you hear him going at the highest meridian. You gotta miss me. I had to look that trust up me. too. <laughs> um, he like grunts. I, trust me. Trust me. <laughs> uh, the backing vocals feel like someone's trying to tell you off and their cronies are in behind them mimicking their threats in a non-threatening way. I, I imagine in the studio that Gord Sinclair wasn't given a microphone, so he had to stand kind of behind Gord Downey. <laughs> yeah, and like yell in the hills. Yeah, so he, that, that's why it's so much quieter and off to the side, where it's like, Gord's like, here, front facing. <laughs> like That's funny. Um. And I, I will say this, I, I had I noticed the lyrics too. Oh, lyrical analysis, look at that. Uh, at one point, the lyrics were saying that um, they should get Ry Cooter to do Gord's eulogy. Because he actually says that, like, get yeah. Ry Cooter to do my eulogy. Uh, I won't dox points, but doxing hypothetical points, because they indeed did not get Ry Cooper, who, Cooter, sorry. I had to look at who the hell that was. They didn't get him to do his eulogy. Huge missed opportunity. He's still alive, I'm, too. I'm currently Googling who that is. I had to while I listened to the song, because when he said Ry Cooter, I was like, who the fuck is Ry Cooter? I, at this point, I just stopped looking things up because there's so many goddamn references. I have no idea what they are. Oh, and he's worked with a, apparently a lot of big name musicians, too. Like, he's a guitarist and a songwriter. Uh, he's got a resume on him. Captain Beefheart, Gordon yes. Lightfoot, Eric Clapton, the Rolling Stones, Van Morrison, Neil Young, Randy Newman, Linda Ronstadt uh warren Z- zevin zevon uh the doobie brothers and those are the ones that you know the word or the know the names of so the, the guy's got a resume on him and so i'm just saying he's still alive and it's a damn shame they yeah. didn't get him to sing gord's eulogy he that, that's what he requested in the song they didn't do it tisk tisk so stupid <laughs> all right with that cheap little note out of the way i guess we'll move on now <laughs> Again, didn't dox any points off that. I just wanted to make a note about that because I'm a smart ass. I'm I'm just sour about it. So mad. Uh, song number four now, Pigeon Camera. I like the vibe of this song right from the start. Uh, the guitars are so dreamy, and I like that they're both sort of noodling away, but they fit together nicely, and it feels sort of melancholic. Wait, I just want to... Oh, I thought I thought I used that <laughs> word. The, oh, wait, I did. Oh, my God. I really dig the clean and kind of melancholy guitars in this track. The the riff of the verse is really cool, too. So yeah. there you go. We, we got some sort of sense. Oh, that's our Canadian uh, poutine fucking Indian sense going <laughs> off here. Your brain, is, your brain is floating in beef gravy. That's our fucking uh, beaver elk. <laughs> uh tundra sense going whatever canadian stereotype there is come on now. oh my god <laughs> yep yep we have beavers and elks on our coin okay <laughs> i can say this <laughs> i really like those clicks in the back they kind of sound like wood blocks but they also sound like just like a keyboard or a synthesizer but either way um they're kind of in like the back right of the uh the mix and i really like that it's like somebody was hired to do like extra sort of you know tambourine triangle all those auxiliary instruments and they're like shit they're paying me i gotta do this click click and they're like okay good i definitely earned my ten thousand dollars how how do i usually point at the layers and then you don't know but then when you point out the layers i don't know because i don't know what you're talking about um listen to it. it i think maybe it happens three times um but it's it's in there i noticed it, it was like I like this. So it's, just okay. so, it's such a tiny minuscule. It's layer. so small. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so small. Interesting. Wow. I missed it though. I'm usually good at picking <laughs> that kind of stuff up. I go, go through like each, I dissect each layer of a song. I'm just like, oh, listen to that tiny little buzzing for one second at the three minute mark. So you, you're the chef that like for banana bread, you, you lay out all a of the chef ingredients. for banana bread. I believe it's a baker. <laughs> uh, whatever. Um, you're, you know what? Shut up. So. You're, you're laying out all the ingredients and you're looking at everything and you're like, okay, we have flour, we have bananas, we have sugar and this and that. And I just look at the finished loaf and you're like, 
don't you want to know what's in it? I'm like, shut up, don't care. And I just push the whole loaf in my mouth. I'm like, this is delicious. That is how we review on this show. <laughs> and then little do you know that I sprinkled, some, sprinkled in some uh, sodium benzoate. So uh, good luck with that. I learned from The Simpsons that that's poison. Ah, yes. Uh, first thing I thought was baking soda. And I was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Oh, wait, uh, maybe I got the ingredient wrong. I don't know. I'm not here to talk about fucking baking. Yeah, it doesn't cheese. matter. Um, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't mind this song. Uh, it, it was it was nice to have. It's a good spot for a come down. And I feel like it's like a lot easier to prepare for the rest of the album at this point as well. Because mm-hmm. like, not that this album's like super high energy or anything, but at the same time, it's like, it's always still good to have like a nice resting point. Yeah. I swear to God, if, if I ever decide to choose the Forge album from Protest the Hero, you're going to be exhausted because it's 10 songs, but it doesn't fucking stop ever. Oh, it is God. fast, heavy, and just, it, it doesn't breathe. <laughs> so. I'm, I'm going to show up to the, uh, to the recording in a neck brace. Oh, I, I thought you were going to, like, you, like, you're going to have bags in your eyes. You all actually have a cigarette in your hand. You don't even smoke, but you all have a <laughs> cigarette in your hand. You're just like, all right, let's do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. And it's like the ashes. It's like a fucking, uh, what's her name? Uh, Wendy from The Shining had the ash on her cigarettes like three inches oh, long. So it's much. like drooping yeah. off. And people are just like, it gives people anxiety to watch that scene just because you're waiting for it to fall. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. A weird little uh, side note on that one there. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the song runs pretty like similarly throughout the entire thing, but because it's so low key, it actually kind of works in this case. So I, I wouldn't anticipate too much from a track like this, like so mm-hmm. many like hills and valleys. So I kind of like what this one gives. It's four and a half minutes. Uh, the runtime didn't bother me, obviously, because I didn't make any notes about it. So yeah, yeah uh, one of the better ones so far on the album. I'm enjoying this. I feel like this song could have been released at any point of their career, I would say up until maybe 2003. Uh, It doesn't sound dated. It doesn't place it uh, in 1992, which I really appreciate. I like that the bass really holds it down during the solo, nothing crazy, not showing off. It's just there doing its job, which it has been doing so far and will continue to do for the next, what, eight tracks. Um, I give this zero out of 10 pigeons solely because I don't really like birds. Birds are adorable. They are not. Then you've experienced the worst kind of birds because uh, there's some very adorable ones, and I, I really. Like I I will watch videos of someone teaching their uh, their parrot to talk. Oh my god! Uh, watch Apollo on TikTok. That bird is. Is that adorable. the one where he's like, "What am I doing?" He's like, "Hat," and I'm like, Hat. "Yeah, that might be the one." What's this made out of? Glass. Okay. Yes, <laughs> that's that's the one. That's Rock. the one. Touch yep. purple. Paper. <laughs> It's oh my moment. god i i love that okay still don't like birds zero out of ten pigeons i i would say though uh i googled pigeon camera and just like some of the old-fashioned photos of birds like these old pigeons with like these old timey ass cameras on their chest was fucking hilarious i love Tourist. it yeah i know because i know pigeon camera was like a, an actual like spy tool used like oh. way the fuck back when and so oh. like pigeons with cameras on them was a real thing i it's the had name no idea and so that's why the pictures of them are hilarious. Just like these, like these little tiny fucking spies. These like little street rat spies. It's so great. <laughs> I had no idea. Oh my god! There's so much, re- so many old references I've never heard of before. I've heard of pigeon camera before, like not just the song, like the actual idea of a pigeon camera. Dang. Okay. Well, shit. More you know, I suppose. I feel like you're going to learn a lot more by the end of this review. <laughs> oh my god, yes. So many Wikipedia holes to fall down. Oh, hell yeah. Alrighty then, song number five, Lionized. Okay, so this song, definite road trip song, no doubt. I definitely see it. Um, now, no idea what this song is about, uh, but that first line makes me cringe so hard. I ended up in the hospital for three years. Uh, cool wind blowing over your private parts not a hundred percent sure if that is an analogy, if it's like a, a turn of phrase, whatever. That is not what I imagine. Do not like. Um, but yeah, yeah. The what the other notes I have are not relevant to that. But yeah, it it probably is some sort of uh, hypothetical analogy. But you're just imagining standing outside naked during winter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so weird. It's oh, it's weird. I I just imagine it's being 
exposed and vulnerable. But I don't know. I didn't really break down the lyrics. But I'm just from that line. That's what I would take from it. But I, I also imagine standing outside naked during the winter. <laughs> well, I did look up the word lionized because I was really curious. Uh, again, learning more things. Uh, apparently, lionize to lionize is to give a lot of public attention and approval to someone and to treat them as a celebrity. It is not about a lion, and that is disappointing. I wouldn't have expected it to be about a lion. It has the word lion in it. What else would you think? Yeah, but it's eyes, as in like it's, yeah. it becomes something. And it's this. We're not talking yeah. about animals. Have you ever seen Jungle Book? I've seen animorphs and Jungle yeah. Book. Yeah. So I mean, Mowgli could be lionized. Is Enter the Pride. No, you know, uh, if Jungle Book and Lion King cross. I was going to go. say, first off, he hung out with a bear. And second off, at the end of that yeah. book or the movie, I should say, he went to the man village. Yeah. So he, he, there's no lionizing anything. Well, that's why you have to cross it with uh, Lion King. I really wish you would just get on board here. Please. No, I like arguing with you. It's better that way. <laughs> I like pointing out your flaws. Ah, yes, as if I don't see them already. As if I haven't been doing that for like 84 episodes now. <laughs> um, so yeah, with the song Lionized. Uh, the, the way that th this one started made me think that we're going to get like a good halftime kind of pace beat going into this one. Mm -hmm. I was looking forward to it. I was, I, I was liking it. Uh, and I think that would have been cool to hear with the low tone guitars, but unfortunately it kind of like did that kind of just similar pace that it's yeah. been doing for the rest of the Very album. Very similar. So I'm just like, okay, I mean, there's consistency at the very least, but just like, you, you got to give me something here. I mean, it's, I don't know, because it's not that I'm getting tired of hearing, but just like, I, I, I'm always wanting more from this. Mm -hmm. I, I think I was going to mention this like uh, a song or two ago, but I, I feel like a lot of the, the hit tracks work better on the radio than they do as an album. Maybe. Yeah. Because like, as I, as I said, with um, um, looking for a place to happen, like when you hear it in a mix of other songs, you don't think twice about it. You're just, Hey, I like the song. This sounds good. I like it. But when you listen to this whole album front to back, it's just like songs like that just tend to blend in. Nothing really sticks out about them. You're just like, okay, I'm going to wait for this track now. So it's like, you're, you're actively thinking about it. So yeah, that's kind of the issue with this type of thing. And I, I get it. We've already stepped into sacrilege territory here, but you know what? I'm, I'm going to stand by that. And I mean, like, it's, they're not terrible songs by any means. This isn't a bad song at all, but just like, I don't know. This is another one that just kind of, yeah, blends a little bit and it just it feels the same in a lot of ways. Like, I generally like the instrumentation of the song, which is good because like the vocals left like little to be desired as well. Mm -hmm. uh, again, more sacrilege there. Sorry, Gord. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I, I'll, I'll stop there because I, I don't know. I'm just going to keep repeating myself at this point. Uh, one statement, one question, and then my uh, bullshit review. Um, the music is similar to what we've heard so far, but there was no solo. So that I, I felt like it was missing, I guess. Um, obviously, it was missing. It wasn't there. But like audibly, I just kind of wish that there was one. I think maybe they just set some high expectations uh, leading up to this song. Um, now, my question is, uh, John Mellencamp, and I am going to bring him up again. Um, no. So he sings, you know, sort of about the heartland and Americana and sort of the American dream and all that stuff. Are the tragically hip Canada's answer to John Mellencamp? Americana. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where it's like, their songs where he talks about the CBC, talks about Canadians and history and all this stuff and sort of Canadian life. Do you think that they're kind of on par with each other when it comes to what they sing about in their respective countries? They would have to be because like Brian Adams doesn't do that. Rush doesn't really do that. Yeah. Uh, Rush has like one song. They have Lakeside Park. That's I a was, very, very Ontario sad. specific, St. Catherine specific thing. There you go. Rush. Yes. My Rush shirt. For the audio listeners there, she just held up her Rush shirt. Uh, <laughs> like Celine Dion doesn't do that. You know, like yeah. these major Canadian bands and artists, like hell, even fucking like going way off the beaten path here, but even recently with like Justin Bieber and that song Peaches, like he, he talks all, all this shit that he gets out of the America and he's like, yeah, you're, you're Canadian. And like this, you get your fucking weed in California and peaches in Georgia. Get your peaches from Winona asshole. You're, yeah. You literally, you're from Stratford. Like you're like a two hour drive from Winona. You can go get fresh peaches right up the fucking road. They're delicious. By the way, I've been to the peach festival. It's great. He, uh, he's only Canadian by birth, but he's American by choice. Yeah, more or less at this point. Yep. And my uh, my bullshit review is one out of two lion's eyes. Oh, so it's like a uh, 
Biclops. No, no, but not Cyclops. Cyclops. That's what I'm yes. Yes. Uh, he had his eye shot out in Vietnam. Um, but the uh, what, what is it? The uh, the VA, the Veterans Association, uh, they're not taking care of him very well. Uh, I thought we were going to say something about poachers, but okay. Not at all. Because <laughs> you just talk about lions. So, I mean, like, yes. poacher got his eye, but that's all they got, though. Yes. <laughs> you think I look bad? You should see that guy. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, the only other thing I have about the song too is like I guess I was expecting like another round of like a verse chorus at the end because they've been kind of doing that so far in the album, uh, but it was over at a pretty decent time. It's only three minutes and twenty seconds, so you don't have too much to sit through and everything like that. No time for a solo. Uh, th- the song is all right, but I can see why it's not a single. I'll say that much. Yeah, because even Quite though I, I parts thing. Yeah, it, twice by the way. <laughs> twice. So that's two cold breezes over your private parts. So, I mean, just at least you don't have to deal with shrinkage. That would have to be me. Okay. So I got a lot to explain. Uh, <laughs> I was in the free, pool. Free and clear. Uh, uh, did we not just make a George Costanza reference off camera? And now I just made one on camera. Jesus Christ. A hundred percent. Yes. Seinfeld's just like encompassing this episode. And then when we're done off camera, there's going to be one more Seinfeld reference. And we're just going to sandwich it all in. Yes. It'll just be a, uh, uh, rtr behind the scenes and it's just us talking about seinfeld various times i'm not as big on seinfeld so i, c- I can name yeah. you some moments but i can't i'm not like i couldn't name a lot of quotes and shit like that uh i saw it on tv when my mom was watching it and sort of putting it on you know mindlessly in the background but that's pretty much it for me saying that was me with like a lot of different shows back then my parents would watch Alrighty then, moving on to the halfway point of the album, song number six, Locked in the Trunk of a Car. Um, and as as much as I dig the overdrive in this track on the guitar, and maybe I just haven't noticed it used yet, I don't know if it had been up to this point, but it feels like it stands out a little more at the very least, so that's why I actually made note of that. But mm-hmm. have there, has there been overdriven guitar up to this point? Because, I mean, this one feels pretty heavier than what we've heard I so far. I don't think so. I know there is coming up, but yeah, up yeah. until now, I know I feel like it's pretty clean and crisp for the most part, anyways. Yeah, so as much as I was enjoying that thing, because that stood out to me a little bit, this one still, again, feels pretty familiar to the other tracks. So just it, it's hard to write something new about these tracks and we've we've been here done that you think we'd be so used to doing this by now where it's like oh this feels the same this feels the same just like like it's it's gonna go back to the brooks and dunn thing where i'm gonna write about fucking hedgehog facts or something like that just to to pass the time because i sometimes i just don't know what to say anymore like i'm literally talking right now to fill space yeah oh yeah um there are a lot of songs that i'm just like i don't know what to say i don't know blah 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 uh i Okay, I did say it in this uh, for this song. I hate to say, but for the most part, these songs are starting to blend together. Um, I agree uh, painfully, but this is a song that I can listen to in passing. Um, Listening to it, reviewing it, analyzing it is a little harder than just having it on in the background as, you know, like you said, on the radio, sort of just in your ears out. That's it. Um, I... There are some things that I do like about it, but it just, it does hurt to say that they all kind of blend together because this is not the last nor the first time that I've mentioned that. I do like how the vocals are pushed forward and aren't on the same level as the rest of the band because it makes it feel a little more personal, like he's sort of over your shoulder and kind of whispering to you. Or maybe you're both locked in the trunk of the same car. Oh, maybe. And he's like breathing heavily on the back of your neck. Ugh. No, thank you. And you can't stop it because you're you're like in spooning position and it's all the room you have because it's a God. fucking trunk of a car. Yeah. Yeah, but he's behind. You know what? We're not even in there. I was, <laughs> was going to make a joke, but I am not going to uh, defame the dead. Um <laughs> The drums are, you know what, we are, we've already made people mad. We can really just say whatever we want now. Uh, the drums are Can we predict- say the hip sucks? Oh my God. No, I didn't mean that, by the way. That was I was like, going to say, you can, but I honestly don't, I don't. Agree. I don't agree with that either. I'm just thinking about the things that piss people <laughs> off. Uh, the drums are predictable, but in a way that if you were to air drum this for the very first time you heard it, you'd probably get all the cymbal crashes on point. Where you think things should lie, they do. Um, but I just wish that this song as a whole didn't fade out over the solo. I know that we got a guitar solo earlier in the song, but it really felt rude to cut it off while some magic was happening. I hated that. Yeah. um, 
I, I don't know. I guess the ending didn't bother me too much because I didn't really... I'm just looking at my notes here. Yeah, I didn't mention anything about the ending, so... I must have been fine with it, but yeah, I'm still thinking, like, the similarity of certain songs was starting to get to me a little bit. Uh, yeah. But I, I will say, like, I did end up liking this song more than I thought I was going to by the time I got to the end of it. Because one thing I noticed that there was, like, a gradual increase in, like, energy as the song approaches climax towards the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just... It, 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 keeps that interest in that regard like it just like the instrumentals get a little more intense the vocal performance gets a little more intense and then at the end of the song when he's just constantly yelling uh, let me out let me out let me out yeah like, so there's like a lot like that's your big climactic moment so it built to this it feels interesting so despite feeling like some of the previous tracks uh i, I like that gradual energy build and i think that's what really made it more enjoyable for me in the end mm-hmm. so this is um, one i wouldn't mind going back to uh, I didn't mind it. I do this. <laughs> this brings it right back to the very, uh, very first song. This has definitely become bar band dad rock, uh, and I give it three out of three Ford Focuses. I you can look at almost any hip song and say it's bar band <laughs> yeah. dad rock. Oh, I mention it again for sure. Oh, there's a few. There's a. I mean, I'm just looking ahead on the list here. There's besides all of them. You there's a couple of them for <laughs> sure. Besides <laughs> all of them, yeah. That's a good way to put it. It don't really matter where you point. I mean, like you're pointing at something that a a band being paid in beer tickets playing a five hour set on a Thursday night is they're playing these songs. Yes, a hundred percent. A five hour set divided between three sets, I should say. There you go. That's that's usually the way it happens. You play for an hour, you take half an hour off, you get your free beer, maybe a plate of nachos. Oh, back on for set two. Oh, I know that I I wrote something about that and I can't find it. Oh my gosh, it would have been perfect to jump off with that. But oh, there it is. Um, So now this is for a different song, but it is relevant to what we were just talking about. Um, uh, Such a dusty, stinky, dingy basement dive bar band song. That's a song coming up, um, but I could definitely say that about most of the Tragically Hip songs that are played in dusty, stinky, dingy, dingy basement dive bars. Hold on. I just had to hit this apply button for the passport because I, I were gone after today. I could just, okay, there we go. Just submitted my application. All right, cool. I didn't say I hated it. It's stinky, just dusty, dingy yes. dive bar music. Yes. yes <laughs> I don't it hate is. it, but here's an insulting term that everyone's going to no, love. It's not insulting. It's like, you know, a dive bar where the plaster is falling off the walls, but they make really, really good dill pickle spears. I'm not going for the pills, dill pickle, whatever the pickles, if fucking cockroaches are crawling out of the paint in the walls. No, no cockroaches, but you can see the mouse traps in okay, the corner. Okay, if the, if the wallpaper's peeling, chance that yes. it smells musty oh, no, there's no wall. There. No, there's no wallpaper. There's no way they would have spared the expense for that. Okay, well, if the paint's even chipping off the walls, then yeah. you know you're gonna, it's going to smell like an old musty suitcase. And that's why I said dusty and stinky. That's I'm glad funny. you're on board. Thank I you. I don't want to hang. It's like that thing in The Simpsons. Can I get a clean glass? Ugh, here you go, your majesty. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally the That's bar exactly. where the hip's playing, apparently. Uh, no, no, though they're not. It's just a cover band of their oh, the, songs. The Practically yeah. Hip from here in Hamilton. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of that. That's funny. The, they're one of Canada's most popular um, uh, Tragically Hip bands, actually. Tribute bands. I didn't know that. And they're from right here in Hamilton. As far as I'm concerned, I could be wrong about that, but still. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, they're actually from Vancouver, but fuck I, it, I've from never, Hamilton. well, I've never seen them, but I've heard the name and I've heard they're, they're yeah. one of the most popular tribute acts for the Tragically Hip. So that's why cool. I think I heard that they're from here in Hamilton. Cool, cool. Americans, are you enjoying this conversation? <laughs> All right, so I was going to do some sort of a good transition here, but I'm not even going to bother. Song number seven will go to. The guitar tone pleases me, but I do think it might be the reverb. I think that's what it is. Uh, I like it pleasing. I like it, although it does help designate the song to a specific time. So unlike Pigeon Camera, this one, I can place it in the early 90s for sure. Um, It sounds like something I would have heard on the radio in the early 90s. And to come to to think of it, I may have. Um, I did write before because I write the uh, band introduction after I'm done my review. So there are a lot of things that are unknown to me until I actually find out. Um, I thought that this may have been a single because it does sound so familiar, but it is not. Mm. Uh, It may just sound like 
the tragically hip. Yeah. <laughs> it might just sound like them because I I'm convinced I've heard this at some point before today. That, that's why it's so weird. Like I, I'm going to say something and then com- just entirely contradicted a moment later. It, it's so funny when people say that they have like a favorite tragically hip song. Cause it's just like, n- uh, throw a dart at a fucking board and you, you, you can hit like literally any song. And it's like, Oh yeah, I've heard that one. And like, cause it sounds like all the ones around it too. But then again, like I think poets is one of my favorite songs. Thank you. My favorite song is off that album as well. Fireworks. I love oh, there that you song. go. Oh, and uh, Grace too actually is. From, it's up there. Yeah. Gift shops, another really good one. Yeah. But I think Grace too is actually. I they have really so good. many good songs, and I think it's it's only uh, from maybe 1997 on did they sort of start. I don't want to say they changed their sound because clearly they didn't. They're still the same people, same band, but it just sounded differently. I don't know. Maybe they were a little bit more influenced by sort of pop sensibilities because that's kind of what I'm getting from it. Um, but yeah, late nineties onwards definitely don't sound like uh early hip, which I appreciate. I like that. Well, yeah. Cause at, at least with grace too, um, that song sounds like it's like, it's made for a festival, mm-hmm. like a big outdoor setting because it's just like this kind of slow, I don't want to say psychedelic cause it's not psychedelic, yeah. but it's like that I, borderline feeling. Yeah. And it's just, it's got a very vast sound that you can just imagine spreading across a field of like thousands of people. But it, it, it commands the attention of the audience where they're, you can hear some of, some of the uh, attendees like clapping or cheering, but for the most part, everyone's kind of quiet and sort of taking it in. Cause it is like a quieter sort of song. So well, it's, except towards the end when it picks up a whole bunch. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, with, for uh, we'll go to uh, the one thing I think that felt the most different for me about this track so far is like it's got like a shuffle in the the drum beat and everything like that. So it's not just your yeah. typical like do do. It's like do 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 do. So like at least that pattern made it feel different and not too similar to the other. So that's good. Yeah. Um, I like the playfulness in the chorus with the instrumentals, but especially in the vocal melodies. So I I. Again, finding fun little things that I do like about it. It's charming and fun, actually, is what exactly what I wrote my notes. Um, and kind of like uh, the Chunk of the Car song, uh, despite feeling similar uh, to other songs, because this one still does, regardless, uh, there was still something enjoyable that made me look past it. So I this is another one that I think I looked a little more highly on. I I still, like I've said a couple songs ago and for a couple songs, uh, I like the vocals. Um, it's unique and sometimes it's hard not to think, man, this guy's going to lose it soon because he kind of borders between like speak singing and like yell singing with just like his whole heart, his whole diaphragm, his whole lungs. And, uh, I like that. It, It kind of makes me feel like, oh, like I should be concerned about this too, or I should be fearful. But then that kind of raises the adrenaline. I'm like, okay, I like this. This is cool. Um, now. I do have a criticism on the drums here. I know that the songs leading up, well, pretty much this entire album, I can't really speak for any of their other songs because I haven't really reviewed or listened to them in depth. Uh, But the drums are really just there to keep the beat. Uh, They don't really flourish too much, but I really wish that they did during the end of the chorus. I wish that it went like double time or something just to kind of add an, like an, accent to the last like chorus line because as I'm listening to it I'm expecting that to happen and when it doesn't it kind of feels like you're eating a bland meal that would just be spiced up if you just added one little thing to it so that kind of that kind of sucked I think it wouldn't have taken away from anything I think it would have sounded great but I mean I'm what 31 years too late um I I can't really explain it in words more than what I already did, but I am starting to feel like I would be a good producer that literally has no education on anything other than what sounds nice. Uh, modern day Rick Ross, if you will. Rick Ross, huh? Mm-hmm. Do, do you mean Rick Rubin? Okay, fine. A modern day Rick Rubin. Because I think Rick Rick Ross, is, oh, as much as a producer, he's also quite the uh, the criminal that you don't want to be involved with. You know, that in- that entire misunderstanding joke, I wrote it word for word in here. I knew you were going to correct me. So Good. Perfect. Now, now speaking of- I don't of let Rick, people have fun on the show. <laughs> okay. Now, this is, this is how funny I think I am. 
uh, mi mixing up Rick Rubin and then you mentioning it, uh, I give this 99 problems out of 100 because the bitch ain't one. <laughs> but apparently the song is. <laughs> no one in my life finds me funny and I have to do it here. I'm so sorry. <laughs> This show is full of bad jokes on both ends, okay? As if I. Do you think every joke I've ever told is taken off? You're fine. Um, no, but I know that after we're done recording, you stand in the bathroom and you point at that mirror like that meme and you're like, you did good. You did so good. Don't listen to her. You're funny. You're good. Oh, uh, see, see, I imagine it more than like. It's after the podcast, I go off all smiling and then like smash cut to me, like in the uh, like a hot shower and just kind of like my my head and shoulders are just droop. And I'm, I kind of look look sad. The, the bathroom's all foggy. And I'm just like, you did good today. You did good today. <laughs> Don't listen to them. They know nothing. Water's dripping off me. I'm standing there just wasting hot water. <laughs> <laughs> How depressing. Anyways, we'll move on now to song number eight, the title track itself fully, completely. Now, for this song, I did mention earlier that the bass and drums kind of walk hand in hand. Um, they definitely riff off each other. Um, but it kind of feels like that's the case in this song because it is like the bass and drums, they're steady, they're together. And the guitar is like a fly buzzing around their heads as they're walking down the street because the guitar comes in with like a a bar of a riff and then something else and some embellishments and this and that. And I, I thought that was pretty cool. Cause it's like, where do you know where to put those and how it's going to sound good, especially if it's just little bits and pieces of, you know, just a pluck here, a strum there. I like that. It's uh, creative artistic. Well, I'm glad this is the song that you mentioned about like the, the bass and the drum, like, holding hands and stuff because this is actually the one where i mentioned like the bass stood out to me the most mm -hmm. um it's probably because yeah like for the most part like the guitar is like a little more subdued in this one i guess yeah um yeah maybe i just hadn't noticed the other tracks maybe the bass had more prominence in other tracks i just wasn't paying attention to but this one again kind of stood out to me for that reason it was a little more forward-facing playful so give you a lot more to appreciate mm -hmm. um and the songs the songs are more or less enjoyable I, I don't think there's anything wrong with the song as i feel about the vast majority of tragically up songs and we've kind of already broken this idea down but this song feels like it's missing something oh really yeah it, like i i don't know something about it feels incomplete like maybe like a bigger break <laughs> towards the end of the song yeah the What's song's so not the song's not full or complete ah look at that jeez i didn't i didn't even see that part coming there you oh, go the you, irony there, you got to, to bunt that one down the field a little bit. <laughs> I won't say that you hit a home run. I'll say that you bunted it. I'll take <laughs> you, it. You got first you. base, and that's all you get. If I get an asterisk, <laughs> that's fine. Um, but, but yeah, like it's something about a big, like if the song had a bigger break towards the end, that would have been fine. Uh, it kind of hits towards the end a little bit, but maybe more of like a build up to that big break would be nice. Just mm -hmm. I don't know, just because it, it's only three minutes and thirty seconds, and so like. Kind of like, uh, I can't remember which song it was before this, but like, it, oh, it was uh, Locked in the Trunk of a Car, where it kind of like starts a little quieter and softer and it's building, yeah. building, building, then you have the big climax. If this one had that in a bigger sense, I think it would have worked better, but I think yeah. it was like lacking some things in that sense. It does uh, speed up and amp up in intensity and speed near the end, but yeah, yeah. I guess you're just looking for what something just more uh, effective or more like impactful. I guess a little effective. Yeah. And just more of a build to it. I don't know. Just okay. cause like it just, it doesn't feel like proper. Like, like you don't it, notice you're in it until you're in it. There's no like, but, but even, even that big pickup at the end felt like a building point. Like, cause if things yeah. were getting faster and it was getting a little more intense, like something's about to like it, that you wait for that bass drop or something like that. And then yeah. And then ends. yeah. So, I, I get that. Oh shit, man. You yeah. blue ball me. Well, they had to at least once. I mean, you've been shit talking them. Nonsense. I, I've been saying just because I don't like like some of the songs, I mean that they're bad songs. I don't know. I'm saying yeah. something nice. Um. <sighs> well, I guess on the vein of something nice, I enjoy the guitar solo. It sounds a little more bluesy ish to me. This yeah. one, uh, I like that. I also never noticed how much space a tambourine could fill. I always thought that's what something that was an instrument that you gave the lead singer's girlfriend just so she'd shut the hell up and be able to play it on stage. Um, 
and everything I want to say about the song I've already said, but uh, it doesn't make me like it any less. But when you're done, I'll give you my uh, my bullshit score. Well, first off, uh, I believe they gave Yoko Ono a tambourine. John Lennon did, and she still screamed like a fucking maniac. So, I mean, like, didn't shut her up much. Did, have you seen that uh, that the video? One with Chuck of, Berry, oh, yes, my yes, God. Yes, <laughs> it is so hard to watch because you can see his eyes are just like side off. <laughs> Chuck Berry's given the what the fuck look and, yeah. and John Lennon's got that look on his I, I may, mainly focused on his face because I was so curious about him he has that like distant thing where he's not paying attention more or less he's just he's like world. he knew what was going to happen before he came in he's like I idolize this man and I'm about to fucking ruin my chances with him because I'm going to let my wife screech like a banshee live during this performance <laughs> And the thing is, like, I love the fact that they didn't even run it by Chuck in the first place. He's just like, no, we're just going to oh. do this. Oh, I didn't look, know that. that. That's why he gave us what the fuck. Look, he, I don't think yeah. he would have approved that if he knew. I guess that's true. There's yes. no way he's just like, what, she wants to scream into a microphone while we're doing a duet? Like, what? I'm like, no. <laughs> that's yes. not what I do, man. Yeah. I watch girls pee in toilets. It's true. He's got those. He's the one with the toilet tapes, remember? I didn't know that, but great, great, great. You didn't know? Oh my god, that's I a huge didn't. controversy. No, oh. he he the, the Chuck Berry toilet tapes. Uh, anyways, my my it, it's it's so fucking gross and bizarre. Um anyways, my my last note is um you want to talk about a band who did the song what I believe did the song justice and actually gave it a building and cool momentous feeling. Uh Alexis on Fire, I saw June sixteenth. They covered this song actually when really? I see them. Um, because they, they were going on about talking about supporting local music and they're very happy people are still doing it. And like yeah. the bands that were opening for them that night are also from the Ontario area and everything like Mets is there, like one of the bands we covered before, uh, the band pup, which I know you've uh, done on like NMR before. I have. Yes. So they're all from like here in like the Southern Ontario region area. Mm -hmm. Uh, so then when they go on about talking about supporting local music, they're just like, well, he, we're going to play a song by another local band. And that's all they said. And then they just break into fully completely. And just, <laughs> everyone was just like, whoa. And th the coolest part is that everyone in the crowd, of course, knows the lyrics. Oh, of course. She said, you're going to miss me. And the whole like 15,000 people. When yeah. you'll see. I can. It was Dallas Green, wasn't it? Because I can see his voice fitting right into that. Uh, him and George were going back and forth on ah. some things. Because uh, uh, George has uh, started singing a lot more now. Uh, oh, the, the the new album Otherness, uh, I fucking adore that album. I own it on vinyl now. Uh, he actually uh, they've they've gotten into this like I don't want to go into uh, too, too much of a tangent, but like a mode of songwriting now where they don't like stop themselves from doing certain things. So now they're yeah. trying new things, and one of them is George actually singing with his proper singing voice. And Fuck yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Oh, it's, it's a fucking amazing record. Maybe we'll do it on the show one day because I am in love with it. That's awesome. Uh, my last note for this is uh, I give this one pigeon out of ten. Oh, the pigeon made a comeback. People are allowed to change. Them. People are allowed to change, yes. Pigeons are allowed to change. <laughs> yes. All right, so song number nine now, moving along. 50 Mission Cap, which again, another thing where I had to like Google what the hell a 50 Mission Cap was. It's like an army helmet or something like that or like given to oh, like, pilots or in like the, the Air Force or something. Yeah. Uh, so I did a little bit of research on this one. You don't have to. The lyrics are the research. I know, but it's easier to do because they're during the second verse, which is just the first verse a second time. Uh, the background vocals add a little bit more information, but they it's like you said, it's not really mic'd up very well. So it's like you kind of have to read the lyrics to know what he's saying. But just as a uh, short little uh, little blurb. Um, now this, this is what I meant with the spoiler last week, where they are very popular in Canada, but couldn't really break into the States because they literally are talking about a Toronto Maple Leafs player that went on a fishing trip and disappeared. Apparently the song was written to introduce the younger generations to the player who was only 24 when he died, but he died in 1951. Yes. I swear. And then I swear to God, I want to write songs by just reading Wikipedia pages. And this is the song that I mentioned, the Dusty Stinking, D D the Dusty Stinky Dingy Basement Dive Bar Band song. It's this one. Yeah. As I said, like, even you with you explaining the song, that's literally just the lyrics. Like, yeah. Oh, and that's all it is. And he mentioned that he stole it from a hockey card that he yeah. tucks under his 50 mission cap. That's why I was like, 
what the hell? What is he tucking where now? And so, oh, yeah. so it's a pilot or like a, a, a military pilot, and he's got just the base, the the hockey card in his like little cap there. Yeah. And going, so I don't. Maybe it's his good luck charm. Um, <laughs> Bill, his Bill I, Barilko, uh hockey card is his good luck charm. Okay, you know I was going to make that into a segue, but clearly you just made the the connection already. So because apparently, like I'm not a hockey fan at all, so all of this is new to me. Um. I guess it was the uh, the curse where he, the w- the last year he was alive, they the Leafs won the Stanley Cup, and six six weeks I believe before his body was found, eleven years later, that's when they won the cup again. So the entire duration that he was missing, the Leafs did not li- win the cup at all. And then I. Well, yeah, it wasn't. 60, I think it was sixty-seven. That was the last one they yeah. ever won. Period. Up to this point, yeah. and trust me, as a Montreal Canadiens fan, that brings me so much joy. Uh, the Leafs have not won a cup in my parents' lifetime. My my uncle is a huge Leafs fan, and I, he was either a baby when they won, or he wasn't alive yet. Whereas yeah. at least my team has won one in my lifetime, and actually even played in the Stanley Cup a few years ago at the very least. So, yeah, yeah at least I've had that privilege. I, I pledge no allegiance to a sports team unless it's professional wrestling, but I'm sure everyone has had enough of that. So, Oh, Team Bullet Club or whatever. I don't even know anything about wrestling anymore. It's so far behind me. Is Bullet yeah. Club even still a thing? Yes, it is. It's still a thing? Yeah, yeah. but the, it's it's like NWO Wolfpack. It's like oh, some sort of branch, branch off a branch. Too sweet. Yeah, fuck, whatever. <laughs> I don't know why they did that. <laughs> Uh, so out of 50 Mission Cap, anyways, going on these tangents again. Um, so out of any hip song, and this is weird to say because, I mean, there's a lot of songs that get way overdone on the radio and over crazy. This one is it for me. Yeah, uh, this is the uh, Hotel California I, effect. I haven't brought that up in a long time, but this one's long. definitely it. Uh, if anyone wants to know what that is, go check back on our YouTube channel somewhere. I made a short clip about what the Hotel California effect is like a long time ago. It was like yeah. episode 15. Oh, dang. But there's a specific clip I made around that time, too, just explain the hotel california effect regardless this song is that to me by the hip where it's a song that's like it's not necessarily bad but i don't ever want to hear it again oh it's shit but because it's just like the uh, you could say it about so many hip songs because they overplay the fuck out of so many of them but like this one i hear the most yeah even to this day when i'm like listening to the radio so just like please stop i think mine's uh ahead by a century or courage are the ones that I hear Courage the most. is another one, yeah. Oh, yeah. Most There's definitely. quite a few. Meanwhile, the ones I like, like Grace 2 and Poets, like only rarely definitely. get played. I'm just like, well, at least they're still good to me then. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's not over. <laughs> at least your favorite songs aren't too overplayed that they become your loathed songs. So at least you can kind of hold them dear still. Just yeah. Good. And we kind of already alluded to this, but the song is simply just like a, a verse and chorus done twice. Yeah. Um, and the only thing that really changes is the vocal presentation in the second verse. Mm-hmm. Uh, other than that, just like there's not a whole lot more going on. It still sounds good, but just like it's one of those things where it's like you got to do something else with it, though, to make it a little more exciting. Like like a melodic or rhythmic switch up would make it feel more interesting. Uh, it's, it's a strange writing choice, but that's just me. Maybe people like it a lot more, don't even think about it. Because, again, as a radio song, just listening to this, I, I don't usually think about that. I'm just... I've heard the song. I know what it is. Don't think twice about it. But now listening to it on the album and doing it in this review, it's just like, yeah, I wish there was more to this. Yeah, um, I can see that. I mean, I've for what it is, I find it a banging song and I couldn't stop tapping my feet to it the whole time. But I mean, that's the whole the drums keeping the beat that they're not doing anything crazy. They're not throwing you any curveballs. Um, and now I guess the song worked because after some Google searching on this hockey player, I now know a lot more than I did before. So, I mean, that's cool. And my, uh, my score is three out of four hockey periods. Fourth being overtime, then that kind of makes sense. (laughs) Don't care. I do. I like hockey, but I'll, I'll, I'll jump on the note very quickly too, because actually the handwritten lyrics to this song, I believe are in the Maple Leafs locker room like oh, framed shit. in the Maple Leafs locker room uh, or in, like in a, in a player's lounge or something along the lines of that Somewhere at the Scotiabank there. Arena. Uh, oh. Yeah, like because this song is now kind of like embedded in their culture. I think they even gave a, a Bill Barilko, he, they, he might have a banner up in the, the rafters because of this song and the attention that it brought. 
I was reading it. I just can't remember the exact details, but I do know, I think like those are like the main points. So it's funny because statistically he wasn't all that great of a player just because like he died so young and he also got a goal that won the Leafs the cup. So 24. Yeah, exactly. So like the, maybe that's why his stats were so low, but still just regardless. Uh, yeah. But still the song brought that much attention that the song, the lyrics are like, you know, handwritten and on a piece of paper framed on the wall. Dang. I'm sure and, they all kiss their hands and then kiss the paper when they're going out to the ice or something. Do you think something uh, rituals? Do you think any of the Do you think any of the Leafs put uh, Bill Barocco's card in their 50 mission hockey cap? Uh, maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe the original was ruined by sweat, and then now they just hand out replicas. Oh yeah, it's like those dollar store trading card packs you could buy, and they're just like really cheap, flimsy cards. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah and they, the, the cover starts, or like the image starts peeling off. So every few games, you just change it up. No big deal. Yeah. Dollar yeah. store trading cards. Uh, and I'll just end up by saying uh, no disrespect, disrespect to Bill Berlico. Obviously, it's a no disrespect on his disappearance or yeah, his passing. But I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll say because I haven't said it yet. Man, the Leafs suck. Why does anyone like them? Fuck the Leafs. There you go. Boom. Uh <laughs> No, we can move on from there. You don't need to say anything. Yeah, about that. I was going to say, I, I have it has nothing. nothing to do with you. I'm just looking directly into the camera and saying that as a Habs fan. I, oh, the, the toilet seat fan. I, I get it. I know. Trust me. I've heard it all. All good. We'll move on now to song number 10, the, <laughs> the Canadian national anthem, Wheat Kings. Oh, my God. The chimes during the opening are so magical. And I really appreciate having a slowdown, an actual slowdown. Yeah, because the only drums you get in this are like the auxiliary percussion, like the hand drum and everything like that. So, yeah, there's no like kick snare cymbals, nothing like that. So like it's a very, very light uh, fireside type song. Oh, hell yeah. Um, I okay. I thought I wrote it, but maybe not. Um, I said, is this the Canadian Wonderwall? Okay. Anyway, here's Wheat Kings. (laughs) That, okay, well then I'll jump ahead because I have a note that kind of tags right on to that. <laughs> of any so- I'm going to read this verbatim. Of any song some college-aged dude could play when he brings his acoustic guitar to a party for no other reason than to try to look cool and could play, this is up there as acceptable, more or less, as long as it's not Wonderwall. Okay, I am <laughs> glad that we are on the same wavelength for the majority of this show. Fantastic. Play this or like Jane says, or maybe yeah. don't play Time of Your Life by Green Day. Don't fucking do it. Oh, hell no. No, play Graduation by Vitamin C instead. Um, Because they, they play a good written set like Graduation, and then you listen to it and you're like, no, 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 no. This is not what we're doing. People have played that at their fucking weddings. It's just like, are you, like, this is one of those. It's called Good Ridden to Tommies. That, that's in the parentheses because the, the other oh. title is Time of Your Life. Oh my god! Uh, so like people say that, and it's like, and also you just you're not even reading the lyric. If you read the lyrics, it's not necessarily a happy thing. So I mean, yeah. like, I don't know. People are just weird. You read the lyrics before you just choose a song, okay? <laughs> yeah, dummies. Um, yeah, you already mentioned like the hand drums, the the chimes, the acoustic guitar. Like, it makes me want to cry for some reason. It just it feels more touching more emotional more pure i guess having all the acoustic sort of sounds and is that a slide on a banjo because i can't i don't know if it's a banjo but there's definitely the slide on it man it sounds nice it might just be lap steel yeah okay mate i love it it, it could be very nice no not lap steel that's a little too bow um it could just be a slide on an acoustic. I mean, it could yeah. just be anything of the sort. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know if Maybe it was a banjo. Effects. It could be a banjo, though. I don't know. I mean, yeah. Either way, I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, and I mean, you, you could say it about any of the other hip tracks too. But the, like songs like this are a really good display of like Gord's storytelling prowess. Mm-hmm. Again, he does it really well in every other track. But because like this song is so far more personal, like again that fireside like intimate feeling yeah and you can just hear the lyrics so clearly and they're being told in a way that you can understand so it just uh it it works that way so this is just a good uh demonstration of what he's capable of uh there is nothing about this song that i would change maybe on the outro a little less slide guitar maybe skip a phrase 
because it's every single one and I felt a little tired of it. But then the song ended. So I was like, okay, good. It ended at an appropriate time. And I give this five out of six, seven eighths. Alrighty then. <laughs> Whatever the fuck that means. <laughs> That's a lot of numbers. It definitely is. I think the only thing that could have approved this song is if towards the end it still sounds pretty and everything like that, but because it sounds like that outdoor setting, because in the beginning you hear like the cracking of fire at the end. Oh, I was going to go in the opposite direction where it starts getting a little too noisy because like then the bugs start picking up and then you can hear like mosquitoes, then more elk and caribou just get really obnoxiously loud. And at a point they have to like just dead stop the song because there's too many animals in the area. And then you hear, oh my God, it's got my leg. You just hear a bear growling. You hear like an eagle screeching and swooping by. Caca! Okay, now we're getting into some comedy stuff. <laughs> I just wanted the song to end really chaotically, just ruin the mood and just kill everyone's boner. Good times. Alrighty, then we'll move on to the uh, penultimate song. Uh, song number 11, The Wherewithal. This is the 90s alternative fast-paced music that I like. How are we on this wavelength? My first note, <laughs> what in the 90s alt-rock hell is going on? Didn't expect the song to go as heavy no! as it did, at right. least as compared to the rest of the album. 100%. This is the heaviest song in the album. But the fact that we both did 90s alt-rock in that note, the same thing when we did with uh, Wonderwall for yep. the weekends. Oh yeah, I told I told you. Honestly, and I'm going to call it now, I will call it uh, when we do the uh, song rankings, I think we're going to get like three or four matches. I think this one's going to be a uh, uh, winner this one i think it's gonna no like uh not this track but just this album the album yeah just from what uh what we've said so far i'm pretty optimistic that we'll match quite a few i think we've only gotten one album so far in season five that hasn't had a match on it yet and i think that was public enemy if i'm not mistaken we are doing very well and i'm very optimistic because yeah the uh definitely sounds 90 90s alternative um, it does sound like it could be released later in the decade and it would have fit in perfectly. And I like that it comes after Wheat Kings because it brings the tempo and the intensity up. Although I do think this would have made a better album ender. Yeah, uh, actually. Well, maybe I, not better, but good. Would have made good. I, I do mention in the last song that I think Locked in the Trunk of a Car would have made a better album ender. Yeah. Yeah. I don't uh, know let you... me out. And then the album ends. You're like, did he get out? I'm confused. No, he, he's he's being driven away in that car. He's <sighs> gone, baby. And then the car screeching and then like uh, driving away and then the album ends. Ooh, and then I just in the very last me. second as it fades out to the quiet thing, you just hear like a car crash end to a brick wall. <laughs> I was just going to say, hey, you want to you wanna be uh, producing partners? And then you really just killed it with that last <laughs> one there. I think the tragic hip should have been a comedy band. It would have just made everything so much better. My God. But it's a band that constantly diverts expectations. <laughs> this is what I get when I'm sick. I, I think of dumb ideas like this. Uh, you're, you're probably all hyped up on like Robitussin and caffeine. Benelin, actually. Benelin and caffeine. You can, like pull out a five hour energy. Diabetics. <laughs> ah, does it taste any? Well, do no, you know it, if it tastes any different. Oh no, I I've, I used to take regular Benelin a long time ago, yeah. but uh, no, it's still the same uh, really strong medicine, whatever. But it's just sugar free, so it's safer for <laughs> me to have. That's all. Uh, the, no brand endorsement, by the way. Uh, Benelin sucks, but if you want me to like it, pay me. <laughs> I'm just having because it it's the only thing that said diabetes on it. That's funny. Diabetes nuts. Uh, and <laughs> I I I dig the aggression in this track. Yes. <laughs> I I dig the energy in this track, but there still isn't making it stand out much more as compared to the other track. So aside from it's like aggression, so yeah. it's one of those things where that has it going for it. But then it's just like you could put this anywhere at this point. It does feel good following Wheat Kings because yes, you want that energy pickup. We're not quite at the end yet. So other than that, though, like this could go anywhere. But it's it's not a terrible track though but i think the biggest problem though is that it feels like a demo to me oh yeah uh, like not in quality the quality fine it sounds like the rest of the album but just because it doesn't really feel like fully flushed out like it feels like something more could have happened something more could have been added maybe it's a short runtime that was detrimental because it's only two minutes and 55 seconds uh but yeah just i don't know this was it felt like a bit of a demo but it's not a terrible track uh i didn't expect a loud song like this, but I like it, and I give it two thumbs up. That's the first perfect score you've given, because everything has like one score shy of being like that perfect score. 
Yeah. Why does this get your perfect? Uh, well, it's not perfect. You could have said one um, and a half thumbs up. I mean, like you could have done. Yeah, but that. I have two. I have two thumbs. I can't go one thumb up. What am I going to do with half my other thumb? thumb? One and a half. But thumbs. I have. I have a whole thumb. Are you blind? I have whole thumbs. You can use like, half your thumb. Chris, literally grow up. Okay. <sighs> I'm. This is like the annoying sibling rivalry happening now. <laughs> Anything just to piss you off is just going to be like my my forte moving forward. And and to be quite honest, all of these reviews are just to get a rise out of you, anyways. <laughs> I, I it's just it's it's not gonna end until like I got you like blood red in the face with <laughs> anger just like just I want you to like literally like break character yell Chris shut the fuck up <laughs> oh, I wouldn't even I would just shut my computer <laughs> well that's the computer. end of the episode <laughs> goodbye <clears throat> wait we can't do that yet we got one more song song oh, number Lord. 12 El Dorado and just like your name uh suggests <laughs> yes it is an eagle song but more than one person can have this song I think Desperado is the Eagle song. Is it? I think so, because I kept thinking it was El Dorado, and I had to look it up. Oh, uh, well, it goes to show how much I know about the Eagles. We, we did one album, and I was Desperado even on Hotel California. I don't remember. That was season one. I don't remember anything from that season, except for Cynic. And Mr. Okay. Bubble, obviously. So apparently the El Dorado Eagles are a football team. Uh, so that's not helping. Might be a call. Um, but if I type in Desperado Eagles, <laughs> that is. I have to click this on the album Desperado. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> but that I I kept thinking that this uh this was their song, and it is not. We know all bands, all albums, and all songs. And oops, we made a mistake. Yep. Oops, we did it again. Um, I could probably. Oh, sorry. You first. I was going to say, usually you want me to go first. <laughs> um, so I do like the way this one sounds, though, at the very least. Uh, so th- I, I do enjoy what this one's giving, although it does end up feeling kind of similar to the other songs once again. But I'm kind of past that at this point, where it's like I'm just still kind of enjoying the way things sound, but just kind of wishing for more out of it. That's kind of like my, a blanket statement for most of the album. Yeah. But I don't let it affect the score too much at all. Uh, in this one, the guitars are like quick paced, uh, but really peaceful. And the addition of what I assume is like a, either like a large hand drum that occasionally gets thrown in. I thought that was really cool. So mm-hmm. at, le- at least it had that going to make it feel a little different as well. It's kind of like they took the hand drum from Wheat Kings and just started like pounding a little harder for the beat on this one. Yeah. I could probably listen to any song that Tragically Hip has released, uh, but I can't deny the fact that this is really kind of feels kind of like an earlier track with just a new haircut. Um, I know I've said that before. I'm not ashamed saying it now because we're at the end. Um, the end of the verses, I don't know if those are like uncomfortable minor chords, but they're very intriguing and I appreciate them and I like them a lot. I'm I'm just trying to remember because I can't remember specific moments like because this is one of the very rare hip tracks that I've not heard before because this is yeah, on the radio, right? So I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I guess I'll agree because I just don't remember at this point. And That's also, you can do. The, the worst part is like, I did listen to this album like a few times to review it, but I mean, I've been sick for five days. So what do I remember over the last five days besides napping a lot and then not sleeping at night? I have no idea. Yeah, your ears are clogged. <laughs> yeah, it'll just hear a huge ringing in my ears, and I write that in my reads. Like, why is there a ringing on this entire album? <laughs> what are they trying to prove? <laughs> oh my god! Yep. Um, but realistically, though, there's not a lot going on in this track that you don't get out of the first minute of it. So again, yeah. just one of those things where it just feels same after a while. Feels like the same as the others. Uh, but I still think it's a pleasant enough ending to the album. It's not so bad. But I did mention earlier too that locked in the trunk of a car could have been a better ender. Yeah. But I'm not so disappointed that this one wasn't. Uh, was. Yeah, I uh, I have nothing to, exciting to report here. Back to you, Chris, in the studio. Thanks. And that's all the time we have for this album. So thank you very much for uh, 
spending time with us, to, uh, listening to us talk about this album. I'm doing this differently now because you've turned to me in a different <laughs> weird way. Yes, we are at the uh, the end of this album now. That is it. So thank you very much for uh, checking out this review and like listening to what we have to say about it. But we want to hear what you have to say about it uh, because there's plenty to talk about. 12 whole songs. So let us know down in the comments below of wherever you're listening because there's comment sections everywhere. We are just curious. But of course, we are not done. You can always tell us more too because it's time for part two out of three of the podcast where we rank the songs. So let's go ahead and above our heads now. Boom. Graphics have changed. There are names. There are numbers. And there's going to be more names, song names to be specific, because now it's time to take all 12 of these songs and in each of our opinions, what was worst to best, least favorite to favorite, whatever you want to see it as, 12 to 1. Yes. Uh, For me, it is definitely uh, what I would listen to the least to what I would listen to the most. Um, but I didn't honestly didn't hate any of them. I uh, didn't dread listening to any of them more than once. So that was that was good. I, th- I think there's only like one or two songs that I wasn't super duper fond of. But yeah, again, I didn't hate them. Yeah, I'm just I'm just meh on them at worst. So it's not yeah. so bad. I get that. Okay, then let's find out where the hell everything's going here. And let's, uh, well, you, you said what, three matches or something like that? I think we're going to have like three. I will take like one. Uh, zero is unacceptable, but uh, my undeniable optimism today says three. You've been getting pretty close recently with these choices. Yeah. So I'm very curious to see how well this works. Song number 12, Lionized. 12, looking for a place to happen. Looking for. Uh, Number 11, at the 100th Meridian. 11, El Dorado. Good start so far. Yeah, definitely. Matchy, matchy. Number 10, 50 Mission Cap. <sighs> you were ruining this. 10, Lionized. Uh, how, how can you bitch about, like, Cold Wind on your private parts and put that song in 10? Because <laughs> the other ones were more boring. Uh, song number 9, Locked in the Trunk of a Car. There's our num- first match. Okay. Locked in. Okay, cool. At least we got something out of it. We still got others. And I got an idea about a couple of them at the very and least. So the same streak, uh, at least one match. So we upheld something. Yes, Good. yes. Uh, this was the song that you said we're going to get three. Uh, where you kind of made this whole revelation. So uh, song number eight, The Wherewithal. Number eight, At the Hundredth Meridian. Yep. <laughs> it it would have been more fitting for that song to match. Uh, number seven, fully completely. Number seven, the wherewithal. Wow, close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, maybe, maybe just the one. <laughs> maybe number, two. Number six, courage. Uh, we'll go to. <clears throat> Come, it doesn't matter. That song has been in my head. I think for maybe three songs we were talking about. You're like, oh, this part of the song, and all I hear is. Courage. I'm like, that is not the song. <laughs> Song's been in my head for three decades. <laughs> Fair. Song number five, looking for a place to happen. Five, 50 mission cap. I think we're going to have our first one match. I hope. Potentially. Number four, El Dorado. Fully completely for number four. Fully completely. Number three, we'll go to. Number three, Courage. The cowardly dog. Okay. Okay. So if we have, if we have number one and two matched, we get three. If we don't, we only have one. There is a lot riding on this here. On my one, the next word of my mouth. The next word. The song number two, pigeon. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Pigeon camera for two and wheat kings for number one. All right. All right. Not bad. You nailed it. You said you wanted to make my face go red. I always go so red when I'm like, it's anticipation. I'm like, oh my God, my heart's yeah, but beating I said in my hands. With, I said blood red with anger. This is like anticipation and excitement. Oh my God. I'm like, I got the I got the nervous diarrhea and my palms are all sweaty. I'm going to work soon. Enjoy that. <laughs> Swamp ass, like hey, for a whole hey. eight hour shift. Hey, whoever I'm around will have to enjoy that. You have to deal with swamp ass. That's, that's, that's you and everyone. Swamp that's fine. Ass. Just... Just do like a little cigar of toilet paper, cram it in your butt crack, and you're fine. That's your night for work. <laughs> me, I, just, I'm so excited. <laughs> me, I will sit comfortably on the toilet and be excited. But before I can do that, we do have to do one more thing. We have to actually rate the record, the title track of the podcast. So let's transition screens now and uh, find out what's happening. We shush. That's my transition noise. <laughs> 
Alrighty then, the album rating screen. Here we are. Oh my god, it's so big. There's a lot of albums there. Uh, probably like 84 or 5 because of that's that weird season one thing that we did. Regardless, yes. the main important part is that this is the album rating screen. Yes, the B tier is huge. And yes, we have to find out where today's album is going. That is the Tragically Hips fully, completely as chosen by Savannah. And uh, I guess I have to go first. You do. I'm scared of where this is going to lie because really it could go anywhere. Oh, behave. Why don't you? Yeah, typical. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I, I certainly behaved because I gave this album a 77.5. I will say it was higher than I was anticipating. Um, I I don't know what it was that I was anticipating, but when my score came out to 77.17, a uh, little less than yours, not anything to, uh, you know... <sighs> can't believe every flipping album that I do, I rank it lower, like that I pick, I rank it lower than you do. So I, you're, what you're saying is I do have the good musical taste regardless, because I like your albums more and I like my albums more. So I think you're wow. just high on, you're high on Benelin. So that's all it is. That's what it was. I'm just going to blame it on external. I'm forces. on the lean baby. <laughs> anyway, it's well combined scores. Now bring the album to the B tier as, oh, as course. fucking anticipated. Uh, 77.33%. 77.33 is just above How to Destroy Angels, which had 77.30, so not too much, uh, but it's not as good as Senec, which well, I'm, I'm feeling like the albums that we've been doing recently have kind of been hovering around this area. Like, mainly like B plus A minus around that area. Yeah, yeah. We really need to, like, fuck with the establishment again and just start using shuffle albums because last time we did, we got, like, Bob Dylan, which was, like, a D tier. We got, like, Guster out of it. Yeah. We need to, we need to start populating C and D tier. We need to go, go start doing some shitty albums. Yeah, let's uh, <clears throat> let's let's do some rando one again. Record, record it, uh, or screen recording uh, it popping up, and we're like, okay, well, now we have to do it. <laughs> do, like, a live take of it. Yeah, why not? Anyways, being I, I the know screen, why not. back now, <laughs> we're back on the uh, actual real screen with our faces on it. Hello. We are now at the end of the podcast, and uh, can you imagine uh, we are not very Banadian, or maybe we are Banadian because we put the most Canadian band you could think of in the fucking B tier. <laughs> uh, you said Banadian, I thought of a banana, so <laughs> cool. <laughs> The Tragic Hip, a very tropical band, by the way. Very much so. <laughs> Known tropical band, The Tragically Hip. Anyways, yes, they went into the B tier. Uh, sorry, not sorry, eh? Uh, the most Canadian thing I could do is apologize for not S-tiering the fucking Tragically Hip. <laughs> That does bring us to the very end of the podcast at the very least. So, hey, thank you very much for making it this far through the podcast. We hope that you certainly did because there was a lot to look at today. We looked at the entire song. We ranked songs. We rated the record. We did all that kind of stuff. And now we want to know what you think about it. We already said it before, but now that nice. it's all done, we can actually, like, you know, mm -hmm. discuss the album more. And, yeah, uh, how badly do you want us deported? Let us know down in the comments below. Please Where be would nice. you rank the songs? Where would you rate the record? Very curious. And why were we wrong for being? B tiering Canada's institution. Mm, maybe we'll do like a, a early 2000s, late 90s tragically hip album and see uh see if we rank it any higher. Cause I, I prefer that era. So maybe, maybe. You chose this album. Yeah, but I had never okay. I can't even say I've never heard this album when it's like eight out of 12 songs I literally have heard before. Absolutely. So so you, you've heard like a good three quarters of the album. Let's just say that much. Yeah, yeah it's the other ones that really <clears throat> that just brought it down is what it is. Anyways, if you're not too mad at us, you can always visit us at ratetherecord.ca. Follow us on social medias. You can also find all the streaming links there. No matter where you listen, you can probably find a link there somewhere. You can get our merch if you really like us and don't hate us. And if you like us even more, you could join the Rate the Record Club or RTR Club, as we just call it. Five bucks a month gets you a bunch of bonus stuff, as I said at the beginning of the episode. So by all means, go check that out. Fun times all around. And I mean... Again, take it all with a grain of salt. Who the hell are we? We're not professionals. We're just idiots. And we're Canadians, too. So maybe that makes it even worse. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. I mean, um, I might disagree with the Canadian part, but I definitely wholeheartedly or wholeheartedly agree with us being idiots. Cool. Well, I'm definitely Canadian. I know that I was born here. 
I don't know where the hell you you're 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 a mystery. You're like Carmen San Diego, except I know where you are right now. Uh, <laughs> yes, and and I like touch back, and the wall falls backwards. I'm in some warehouse. Oh, I was gonna say that you're actually using one of those Zoom backgrounds where it's just fake, and yeah, you're just you're like you're, you're in oh some my like God. you're in some like Dubai office right now. <laughs> okay, so side note, um, there have been a couple uh, new music reviews, and I love this song. Well, I guess one of each, uh, where I had to record somewhere else in my house. I did try and move my desk, take a picture of the wall, and try and use it as the green. And like it as did the not work. Green, it did not work at all. All of this detail on the wall messed it all up. But I, I mean, I'm still trying. I'm still trying. Try some new things. I mean, season five's on right now, but season six, boom, that's when everything's gonna be gonna have like LED lights and shit. It's gonna be crazy in there. Oh hell yeah! It's gonna be right the record and the uh, LED <laughs> sign. Like a 30 foot flag that you would put on a huge stage. It doesn't even fit in the background. Yeah, drape it over myself. Oh, can't wait. Anyways, uh, sorry for dragging on at the end here. We are at, because we are at the end of the episode. But before we let you go, we do like to give you a little sneak preview what to expect next week. Uh, I chose the album, so will it be good? I don't know. We'll find out. Um, So usually I try to give some sort of a, a, like, decent hinting clue as to what we're doing but this one's hard not to spoil with no matter what i say Mm -hmm. so i left this very vague and just said a musical legend who is no longer with us aretha franklin wouldn't that be weird i also don't think she's dead is she not i don't i don't know anymore i don't think so (laughs) if you name me someone who was big in like the 60s or 70s yeah then i won't know if they're alive or dead at this point donny osmond is he dead? I don't know. He's not. He's alive. Yeah. But Prince could be Prince. Prince has passed away. Unfortunately. Yeah, we could do Michael Jackson again. Could be Michael Jackson. Has it been long enough yet? We usually have like a statute of limitation on like how far between uh, bands we could do. Chris rewrites the rules and does Michael Jackson's Thriller. But no, no, no. It was the 2007 re-release. It's fine. It has one extra song. Yeah, the Don Gong Girls Mine fucking 15 minute extended <laughs> edition. Can't wait. <laughs> anyways uh clearly not doing that i don't want to hear that song anymore that that one on that album not a fan of that one regardless though that is the end of the episode so if you can somehow guess which musical lesson passed away and we're going to be covering next week then uh let us know down in the comments maybe you'll win a prize of gratitude until then go listen to some awesome music like the tragically hip if you haven't you americans and we'll uh see you again real soon so take care friends bye we're not canceled <laughs>